like to talk about this, as uncomfortable as it is sometimes, is because I'm one of you. I'm a tradie, I'm a plumber, I'm a you know, son of a dairy farmer, um, just a battler who, you know, some of you will, will win awards here tonight, a lot of you done apprenticeships, I'm just one of you. This could happen to any of us, you know, and there's people in this room who know people who didn't survive what I've survived. So I think it's uh, prudent to, to talk about it. Um, it's, um, National um, Amputee Awareness Week, ironically, and it's um, National um, Mental Health Day today. And um, um, we're contributing to Let's Talk as part of the, the uh, contribution to it. So I'd like to thank Seth for for that. So part of this is all about opening up conversations um, and talking about uncomfortable things sometimes. But that's what this was about. So. Um, I spoke to a couple of schools and I went to a beautiful little school called Meribah. Uh, it's quite a um, great little school and um, the kids are beautiful. But what they try to do at the school is develop a culture. And so the culture, they've got what they call their word wheel and I learned from them. And every week they, they spin the wheel and they, they develop the topic. They talk about the topic, they flesh it out and then they try and live by it. Okay? So, I thought that was a magnificent um, example to set, and so um, I've sort of developed some words myself that I think are relevant to my um, situation. So one of them being gratitude, and it's being thankful for what we have around us. Not for what we want, it's for what is here now. And we don't sort of get that sometimes. So it's such a simple thing, but it's just simple gratitude. Empathy, not sympathy, empathy. The ability to understand and share the feelings of others. Um, and to do that, we need to be present. We need to be present in the moment, to listen, to take the time to slow down, put our phone down, give the people due attention, and that's part of what empathy is, not sympathy. Um, another one I learned from them is resilience. As a parent, as an employer, as a son or daughter, um, you try and teach your children resilience. And the dictionary tells me the resilience is the ability to be happy again after something difficult or bad has happened. Okay? You know, it's the ability to bounce back. You know, if shit happens, how do you respond? How do we get out of this, how do we get ourselves out of this hole? How do we respond? So see there's some of the things that I've learned, and I'd like to thank Maryville Primary School for what they taught me. Um, <coughs> Okay, that's me in my happy place. I will work. I love work. That's what that's what I love to still love doing it now. It's probably changed a little bit. I'm in a hole. I've got my Jenna. I'm clearing the dairy drain. I've got the pants on, covered in cow poo. Son of a dairy farmer. That's what we do. Getting shit done. Love it. That's that's me. Yeah, there we go. So, we've been, so we lived in a dairy farm, and so part of that is the developing your work ethic. You know, I didn't know I was developing work ethic. I had two choices: do or get a kick up farm. That's how dairy farmers work. That's how farmers work. That's how we talk. Cows got to be milked twice a day, seven days a week. I don't care what's Saturday, Sunday, Saturday night. That's that's how you develop. That's how I develop my work ethic. I'm from the old school. Of um, getting in square square bars, you know, to a thousand square bars, and that was our summer job. Loved it. Couldn't get enough of it. Very, very fortunate enough to get an apprenticeship with Turlins, uh, Donnie and Jean, back in 1986. I was 16 years old. So young. They were very, were very grateful for them. Beautiful family. Um, and I've employed so many apprentices over the last 40, 50 years. So I was very grateful for that. Um, Took a normal pathway that a lot of us do, developed as a subcontractor, started my own business over that period of time. Our, our policy has been to employ apprentices, um, to grow our business, you know, to develop young people. Um, and so over that period, and that's hence our relationship with South West Tafe, which we're very proud of. Um, we've completed all sorts of different plumbing works, but that's not relevant today. So. Okay. 1986, I've been in the plumbing game for 30 years. Daughter's doing year 12. It's part of my mental health. 
I thought, I need some time. I need, just need something for me. And we're sitting in at Christmas time, and I'm going through the phone, and here's this um, Kokoda trip. I always wanted to get Kokoda. I read a lot of war stories, read a lot of books, and Kokoda is something that I'm excited about. Um, at six months, try and get fed. Um, you know, we started the north coast of Kokoda, and we land, we went to where the um, where the Japanese landed on the north shore. Um, and we rode our mountain bikes back to the start of the Kokoda track, and then we walked the Kokoda track. And then from there we, we went, um, rode uh, the mountain bikes into Port Moresby. Okay, um, as you know, um, the Kokoda track is quite a, a, a hilly, a hill, very hilly, um, but it was a magnificent experience. And it gave me a goal, it gave me something to, to look forward to, something to train for. I used to put the pack on, I'd walk to Port, Port Ferry. You know, I went up to the Grampians, walked around the Grampians. Um, it just engaged my mind um, and, and something to aim for. And I really enjoyed it. I found it a very um, fulfilling exercise. The highest point in the Grampians, uh, the, uh, sorry, in uh, Kokoda, is two and a half thousand metres above sea level. And we walked for uh, 95 kilometres, and it took us six and a half days. And it was magnificent. Okay. Um, we had a great time, great camaraderie. I didn't know any of these people. Um, still friends with them on, on Facebook, some of them. Um, but it was just a great time um, for me, and I really enjoyed that. But I didn't expect this. I didn't expect to get as much out of Kokoda in re in reverence to the war and to what when what the sacrifice that was that was that, that occurred there. Um, and then um, so we're de developing the empathy. Um, for what the soldiers have been through and what they, the sacrifice that they made for us. Um, there's lots of memorials along the way. Um, this one says courage, endurance, mateship and sacrifice. Um, and then you, and, and the, the beauty of Kokoda is you're, you're drawn into the place, you get the, the feel of it um, and you can well imagine, you know, 300 Japanese soldiers coming down, down that ridge sometimes. So it's, it's a very moving place to be a part of. Um, go back. So this slide we've just gone over, this is day five. I'm in my happy place. And when I reflect on this photo in the sense of why is it such a why I'm so happy here? Quiet. No white noise. No phones. No newspapers. No have to be somewhere, have to do things. It was just a quiet time. We walk in silence, we would talk. It was just, a, in, in the world we live in now, to actually stop and reflect and have four or five, six, seven, eight, nine days of that was just a cleansing experience for me. It was just the most magnificent part. And we joked around, we're exhausted, we go down swim in the, in the creek, and we get up and go again. It was just so invigorating. And I think a lot of people that I speak about in Kokoda have similar experiences. Um, so, Papua New Guinea is a third world country. It's extremely poor. Um, we come here, we spend 10 days here and we go in. These beautiful children, look how happy they are. They're so proud. They've got their school uniforms on. They're being educated. Um, we're developing empathy all the way along. But this is where they live. This is, this is fairly standard accommodation. So, you come home from Kokoda, you get to the end line, finish line, our headspace was we're going to the Port Moresby Yacht Club, we're going to drink beer, we're going to eat steak. We've done, we've come with Kokoda. Our guide pulls us aside and says, no, no, we've got one, one more place to go before we go home. Bramana War Cemetery, 30 kilometres north of Papua New Guinea, up from north of, north of Port Moresby. Three and a half thousand soldiers are buried in this, in this cemetery. There's a mixture of Australians, New Zealanders and Englishmen. Um, I guarantee every single name in this room would be on a gravestone that, in that, in that, in that, in, on a stone. The most moving place I've ever been to in my life. Walked around for an hour and a half, I think we all cried. Every single one of us. It was amazing. One little story, there was a, there was a plane that crashed into the side of a mountain and they, um, there was 14 people on the plane. After the war, they repatriated the bodies and they're buried side by side in the cemetery. They're still there. 
it was the most amazing place. So there's my grounding for gratitude and empathy. Um, and then I've got joy. We won a great one player. Bulldogs, man, I never thought we'd win grand final. Never. Come out of the blue, completely unexpected. It was a magnificent day, so very happy. So there's my headspace. Okay, I'm going pretty well. sitting over there and you're sitting over there and you pass each other and you know forever or you miss each other and just the opportunity's gone. My sliding door is sitting here. I'm driving the truck, heading out to Lake uh, Lake Lee, delivering to dirt, um, 2.35 in the afternoon. In my rear vision mirror I see two police cars coming. I slow down, let, let the cars go past. If I didn't, they would, they would have come, I would have slowed them down on the bridge, which is another 800 metres up the road, slow down. 30 seconds I reckon I lost. Okay, let's count those 30 seconds. So I'll just give a warning, there's a couple of photos here that might be upsetting of people, so if they'll, they'll only be up for 30 seconds. There's my 30 seconds. 30 seconds later, I'm past this. 30 seconds before, I slow down and, I, and we have a near miss. Um, obviously we didn't. Okay, so somewhere in there, there's me. Um, so I was trapped in there for an hour and a half. Uh, I was conscious for the first 40 minutes. Um, and I got out alive. So I'm very grateful for that. But from that point on, I'm just a passenger. I'm a passenger in the team. The team with you being the SDS, the CFA, the air ambulance, all those people who swung into action. And we don't realise how lucky we are until, until, we, until we have to draw upon them. We just recently um, um, celebrated the 10 year anniversary of their out air helicopter being in, in, in this area. And they've performed something like 3,000 rescues or, or missions. So, and covering the whole of this regional area. So, <coughs> for the people who are involved in getting their influence to, to this area, thank you. So we landed the uh, 45 minutes later. We landed the uh, Epworth in uh, uh, the um, Alfred Commercial Road, and um, in, uh, in the hands of some of the best paramedics, um, uh, surgeons in, in Australia. When I woke up, uh, I didn't have a leave, so it wasn't negotiable. It wasn't so fill out the form. We'll talk about it. It was gone. One of the first things I said to my um, my carrier and my brother were in the room and they said, um, they woke up and they said, uh, Darren, you've been in an accident here, yeah, that's fine, yeah, I don't understand. I said, um, you've lost your leg. I said, is that all? And they said, oh, pretty much. I'm happy with that. Go back to sleep. <laughs> I don't know, that's a reflex. I don't know how that comes from. So, but I'm alive. So we go through the process of recovery. Um, this particular slide is interesting. I've just had first day at the Epworth, we're going through rehab. Um, 12 weeks early I'll stand on top of that mountain in um, Port Moresby, at, uh, on, on Kokoda. 12 weeks later I'm sitting here. So what happens, we start to use some of the same principles that we use for leading up to it. We set goals, some small goals, weekly goals, daily goals, um, get that stupid beard off, that's probably the first one Kerry said. <laughs> um, which I did. So then we work, we work, we, you know, I was some football coach the other day, he said, control the controllables. Well, the controllables for me was to get fit, get healthier, um, you know, be able to um, move myself around independently without having to rely on nurses or anybody else, um, and let the, leg, let the leg heal. This leg was broken in three places, let it heal and then we'll move on to the next goal. 
So we break it down into small achievable goals. Um, I'm terrified in that photo, by the way. Absolutely terrified. So 12, um, eight weeks after the accident, um, I got a new leg. Looked like Jake the Peg there. Um, we're pretty happy. We're pretty happy. We're up and about. Um, we're away. I'm upright again. Um, we move on to the next goal. I still can't dance. <laughs> My old John Travolta pose. Um, but learning to walk again, um, and something I can't feel. I, you know, I'll put it out there in faith that it's going to be there. So to retrain the brain, to reprogram yourself, you know, 46 years of just doing things that you've, you know, that you've taken for granted, we need to retrain the brain and, and work out how we're going to do these things again. You know, change, rechange the reflex process. Empathy is the people in that room and the people on that ward, a lot of them aren't going home as quick as what I am. A lot of them aren't going home back to work. A lot of them will be in care and will be in rehab for a long, long, long time. I'm getting out of here. Christmas tree's there, I'm out of here before Christmas. That's the goal. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. There we go. No, it's not. So, daughter's doing year 12. Stupid father had an accident. Go back on that one. So, once again, um, every right to feel sorry for ourselves. Our daughter's um, graduation um, dinner. Two parents in that room, two fathers in the room had died in the, th in the three months leading up to their present to their presentation. We've got no reason to feel sorry for ourselves. Right, okay? We're, we're just happy to be here. Okay? And we celebrated and we enjoyed and we felt present in the moment and it's a day that I will never forget. Okay? My beautiful uh, physiotherapist, Gemma, I still talk to Gemma, she's running a marathon this weekend. Um, without the health professionals, um, we couldn't do what we do. So they motivate, they push, um, growl. Um, she's like a second mother to me. She growled me all the time. I, I did get her in trouble a couple of times. I, I think the record was eight falls in one day. Um, so she's got to, I've got to fill out. Every time we fall over, I've got to fill out a report form. Stop falling over. Um, but we're just pushing the envelope a little bit. Okay, nurses, if there's a nurse in the room, thank you. Love nurses. Um, nurses are angels from sent down from heaven, I swear. So thank you to all the nurses. Okay, my mother growled at me one day. She said, Darren, you're just like a five-year-old boy again. You're trying to, and I said, yeah, what is it? I'm trying to relearn all these things that I used to do again. Just like a five-year-old boy. And I fall over, and I get back up, and I keep trying stuff. But it's good. Walking. Swimming. Swimming's my passion now. There's my brother Peter there at the side. Um, I look like a bloated seal there. <laughs> um, first swim back 12 months after the thing, Port Gamble. Absolutely terrified. Um, another goal ticked. Very happy. Um, Peter Pub last year, or this year, sorry, 5K, did the Peter Pub 5K, just did another 5K in Queensland last week. Signed up for a 10K in May. Sorry, I didn't talk about Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about goal setting. It's about what do I do next? Where do we go? What, what can we do? Um, uh, one common theme for a lot of these photos is the woman that's standing here, sitting here, my wife. Um, when you go through these traumas, um, it puts a lot of pressure and puts um, a lot of pressure on everybody. Um, family members, staff members, um, friends, family, it puts a lot of pressure on everybody. Uh, so I'd like to thank all of those, in particular my family, uh, my younger brother Nathan, my sisters, um, my brothers, um, Kerry's family in particular. Um, without that su family support, you cannot achieve anywhere near as much as you can. So, thank you. Uh, mental health. Okay. So, one of the interactions I had with Tate was about five years ago, one of our apprentices committed suicide. Um, he was, a, he was a, um, a student here at Tate. 
So that had a significant effect on myself, you know, workmates, obviously his family, the community, border community. Um, and I thought from that time on, we need to talk about this a bit more. And hence, um, let's talk. Um, this is a really shitty day. Um, this is Melbourne Cup day. So seven weeks after the accident, um, I'm in the wheelchair, I'm going down to the gym, I'm at the door up there at five to nine every morning, and the door didn't open up. I said this to, went back up to the room, I said, this, where's the gym? Oh, it's Melbourne Cup day, it's public holiday. I said, well, what am I gonna do now? I've got all day. So I had my mental health breakdown that day. Um, I lost my habits, I lost my goal, I lost my focus for the day. I was lost. Rang my sister up, I said, uh, down the phone. She was there an hour later and we spent the day together. She got me through it. Um, so you don't go through traumas without some sort of mental scarring or mental um, injury or mental um, cost. And um, I'm fortunate, um, I, you know, I'm happy to talk about it. I've talk, I've, I've talked to a psychologist about it, I've talked to a doctor about it, I've talked to friends about it. Um, we review, we talk, um, and uh, I learned a little valuable lesson leading up to Kokoda. Um, you, have, you have to get a full medical. So I got the full medical. Um, and um, I walked out of the medical and the doctor said, uh, I said girl in the office said, how's it going? I said, I'm, I'm bulletproof. <laughs> and in hindsight, that was a stupid thing to say, because we're not bulletproof. So uh, I learned that the hard way. So I'm a very lucky man. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to share the story. And um, so go home tonight, put up put your arm around your kids and say, you know, let's just enjoy life because we never know what to do in the So thank you.